Jennifer Lopez is reportedly in negotiations to buy this mansion in LA. It's really more of a compound. This place is out of control. They're asking 55 million, but by the looks of things, I think she's actually gonna steal this place. The house has been on and off the market for 10 years now, which is kind of surprising considering it's a bit of an iconic estate in one of the best areas around. Celebrities like Tom Ford live in this neighborhood, Sean Parker lives around the corner, and P. Diddy's mansion is right next door to the one that JLo is pursuing. There's a lot going on here, a lot of drama surrounding everything that we're gonna talk about today, but in this episode, I wanna focus on three houses houses primarily. The first one is J-Lo and Ben Affleck's former house, which they're still having a hard time selling. The second one we need to look at is J-Lo's new house, the one that she's currently pursuing that we were just talking about. And then last, I want to show you guys the listing for P. Diddy's house. It's the same house of his that recently got raided, but it's now officially on the market. Never a dull moment in LA. Let's get into it. This whole story started somewhere around early 2024 when rumors started swirling around that Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez were gonna get a divorce. By August, it became official. JLo filed for divorce from Ben after dating on and off for something like 20 years at this point. We talked about this story in another video, so I don't really wanna get too much into the whole JLo Ben Affleck thing. But on the real estate front, Ben seems to have made the first move. He moved into a $100,000 per month rental in Brentwood, California, right around the corner from his ex-wife. Then not long after moving into that rental, he bought a $20 million mansion in the Pacific Palisades. During this window of time, I'm pretty sure that JLo was just staying in the old house that they used to own together. These guys owned a big house in Beverly Hills. You guys probably recognize this one from the last video on these guys. It's a 12 bedroom, 38,000 square foot house that they've had listed a couple months now. They're asking $68 million. So their old house hasn't sold yet. $68 million is a lot of money. It's probably gonna take a little while before they hook a buyer, but I wanna show you guys something real quick. So realtor.com did this like AI mock-up of their old house. Basically, I think their standpoint here was that Maybe their old house wasn't exactly the right style, so they plugged all the photos from the listing into this AI tool and showed us what it would look like if you turned it into different styles. So I got two windows of the same article up side by side. This is gonna be the easiest way to show you guys what's going on. So this is obviously exactly the same. This is their actual house that's for sale. Oh, look at them, they used to be so happy. Okay, but here's the mock-ups. This is actually really cool what they did here. So here is their actual like real life kitchen on the left side of the screen. And then here is a coastal kitchen that they mocked up by just plugging it into this tool. In case you're not feeling coastal, they also prompted it to do a contemporary style kitchen. Not bad. Here is a traditional kitchen. So in here we got wood countertops. We got a stainless steel structure up here instead of this wooden one. Mid-century kitchen. This is my favorite style. Not gonna lie, this is not the greatest example of mid-century modern design, but still pretty cool. And then last, they do a farmhouse kitchen. So obviously a lot of wood in here, both on the floors, countertops, and the ceiling. It's pretty crazy. I play around with ChatGPT every once in a while, like if I'm trying to come up with a video title or whatever, but I haven't really played around with the visual ones like this before, but it's interesting how you can basically just give a photo to one of these AI tools and tell it what you want it to do with the photo and it can just spit out some Photoshop results. It's pretty crazy. Now let's move on to the backyard. So the left side, this is what their actual real backyard looks like. And then over here on the right side, they asked it to do more of like a coastal exterior. It looks cool. This whole enclosure, the balcony up top, I don't know. I don't think that's actually all that functional, but it looks cool. This one is a traditional exterior. I absolutely hate this with all the brick, but that's traditional. Here's a mid-century exterior. Okay, the outdoor ones aren't as impressive. All they did here is they put wood on the walls. And then farmhouse exterior. So if you basically wrapped the thing in shiplap and painted it this like mint green color, I guess they're calling that farmhouse. Last, we have the bathroom. So left side of the screen is JLo and Ben Affleck's actual bathroom. Right side of the screen is what AI did to turn it into a coastal bathroom. Here's the contemporary version of this same bathroom. I mean, let's be real, just cleaning up all this clutter goes a long way, but I like the contemporary style. I think this is actually pretty solid. Next, they give us a farmhouse bathroom, kind of the same idea. They just basically put these warm wood and stone textures everywhere. The last one here they show us is Mediterranean with like the baby blue walls. I'm not gonna lie, this doesn't 
feel very Mediterranean to me, but it's still cool. Hopefully they hook a buyer soon. Realtor actually dug up that these guys took out a $20 million mortgage on the property, which means that their overhead just to own this empty house is over $250,000 per month. Yikes. Now that all that backstory is out of the way, let's take a look at this new house that Jennifer Lopez is apparently on the verge of buying. It's a famous mansion known as the Azria Estate. I think is how you say it. It's a very well-known mansion in Holmby Hills. The house got its nickname from a previous owner, Max Azria, who was the owner of an old woman's clothing brand called BCBG. This house has been on the market a really long time. It was originally listed way back in 2015 for $85 million. The place has been basically on and off the market ever since with a bunch of price adjustments. Concierge Auctions even picked it up in May of 2024, so the seller even tried to sell via the auction route but that didn't produce a buyer either. Here we are today, the price is now $55 million. It is a 14 bedroom, 25 bathroom, 30,000 square foot house. From the cover shot, this house has it all. Huge main house, a swimming pool. It's kind of like a mile away, but it's got a pool. This is probably a guest house or a pool house. This is probably a staff house. You got tennis courts, grand entrance out front. Feels very private. Behind the front door, you got this view. This is baller. When you're looking at two staircases that weave up each side of the room when you walk through your front door, that's how you know you made it. Looking back off the living room, I'm going to guess this is looking across the yard, across the pool, and then into that pool house. We got some parquet flooring here on the ground in the living room. Some people look at this as dated, but I don't know. I kind of appreciate parquet flooring. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. The house was obviously professionally staged. The place is furnished to the nines. I like the white walls everywhere. It makes it feel really spacious. We got this cool little bar room slash game room with a fireplace and a pretty wild light fixture. Nice big kitchen, kind of a strange mix of pennant lights. They got three different pennant lights hanging over the island. I've never seen that before. Very busy, but hey, you're gonna have plenty of light when you're cooking. Oh, that's a cool shot. Looking back at the front door with the staircase on either side. Another one of the living spaces. I mean, this place is 30,000 square feet. It probably has like five living rooms. Master bedroom is massive. Master closet is probably twice the size of my master bedroom. I'm gonna guess that this closet has something to do with why JLo loves this house. And if that one closet off your master bedroom wasn't enough for you, they got another that's just as big. Plenty of space in the bathroom too. I don't know how I feel about this around the shower. That's kind of hideous. It seems out of place to me. Cozy little office. We got another bedroom. Looks like up on the second floor, which is also huge. This is probably advertised as like a second primary. Love the life-size chess outdoors. That's a cool feature. But what's going on with this fireplace over here? Why do they have glass around it? I bet you that thing is historic. It's probably a million years old and they just don't want anyone to knock into it. I guess, I don't know, what do you guys think that's all about? Oh my God, just look at the view from your main house looking down at your pool. It's a hike, you need to probably pack a water bottle and a snack if you're gonna go down to your pool because it's like a mile away, but what a view. Oh yeah, there's the home theater, very nice. Little concession stand off the theater, that's also a cool touch. Oh, this room doesn't feel anything like the main house, but it's got good vibes. That furniture and that rug, that really livens this room up. Based on the order of the photos, I'm gonna guess this is like the spa slash pool house. Look at that, that's like a resort style spa right there. Very cool view looking back at your house from that spa area. There's a tennis court in red. You don't see red tennis courts very often. I really wonder how many people who buy these houses actually play tennis. Like. If I had to guess, it's probably one in 10 at the most. Of course, there's a sauna. I really want a sauna in my house at some point in life. I don't have room for one right now, but I freaking love saunas. Then they got this greenhouse. I'm assuming this is like a garden area. This next drone shot shows it over here in the corner. Look how big that thing is. That's big enough to grow enough food to feed your entire family, probably the entire neighborhood, really. One thing a little interesting about the location of this new house JLo is pursuing is that it happens to be right next door to her ex-boyfriend's house, P. Diddy. I didn't even realize that these guys dated. Apparently that happened back in the late 1990s and it didn't last long. Look at this though, this is kind of hilarious. So we're gonna do another side-by-side this is that New York Post article showing the two houses right next door to each other. 
here's the one that JLo is maybe buying, and then here's the one that Diddy lived in before the raid. Here is the Google view. So we got JLo's house right here on the right, and then Diddy's house right here on the left. You can see that this like secondary structure of JLo's house is kind of backing up to his house. You guys are gonna see where I'm going with this in just one second. So here is the drone shot from Diddy's listing, okay? so. Here is Diddy's house, here is JLo's house right next door with that secondary structure backing up to his house, right? Then here is the cover shot on JLo's new house. So there's that secondary structure we've been looking at. Where's Diddy's house? Nowhere to be found. They literally photoshopped every single one of these trees into the shot. This house looks like it's sitting in the middle of the jungle. I have no idea why realtors do this. Like Photoshop on listings is okay. Like you're gonna edit your photos, that's fine. That's industry standard. But to make it look like your house is sitting in the middle of a jungle and not show that you've got some neighbors, it's just weird. To me, it just feels kind of like a bait and switch. Anyways, speaking of Diddy's house, that house actually also just hit the market last week, which isn't a huge surprise since the house did get raided and now he's wrapped up in all this legal drama. So let's look at his listing too real quick while we're at it. Might as well, right? They're asking $61.5 million, which doesn't sound crazy for the area, but this is actually was pretty crazy. It's only 17,000 square feet. So this house is about half the size of JLo's new house, but he's asking, what, like $7 million more? The lot size on this one is only 1.3 acres. It's a good size, but it's not that much compared to some of the places we look at around here, but they're all level acres, so it feels like you've got a ton of land. Place lights up nice at nighttime. Here's a shot of the swimming pool. I will say, even though obviously he does have neighbors here, it's really private. I mean, these hedges are probably like 10 plus feet tall. Not really sure what this is. This patio off one of the bedrooms probably. There's that statue. I don't know where that statue came from, but I'm gonna guess that Diddy was behind it. Then here's a couple shots of just like your entrance and your motor court. Talk about a grand entrance. Diddy actually bought this house from the developer Nile Niami way back in 2014. He paid Nile 39 million for it at the time, and from what I understand, Diddy was actually a huge fan of Nile's work. No more photos of this one. They only show us photos of the exterior on the listing. Not sure why, maybe because it's still a mess from that raid. Who knows? It's always interesting to me seeing these compound trophy properties hit the market around Beverly Hills and Bel Air because a lot of them seem to follow the same path. Like they hit the market at some crazy price. They drop their price and drop their price and drop their price over the course of years and years. They change agents a bunch of times too, but a lot of times they just kind of never seem to sell. In the case of JLo's new house, TMZ says that she's trying to negotiate the price down from 55 million all the way to somewhere in the $39 million range, which to me seems like an absolute steal for a house with this much square footage and land and this location. Fingers crossed that she lands this deal and she's able to move on to the next chapter of her life. I'll see you guys next week.